Hello online viewers, welcome to our lecture video. In this lecture video, we are going to solve this uh, equation using gauss seidel method. In the, in the previous video, we solved a similar equation using the Jacobi method. We have already published a video on how you can solve your equations using newton raphson method, false position method, bisection method, iteration method, which link you can find in the description box below. So before go, seeing how, how to solve by using gauss seidel method, uh, firstly, I'll recommend you to see the video on Jacobi method, which link is uh, in, the in the description box below. So the condition for gauss seidel method is as same as Jacobi method. gauss seidel method and Jacobi method are quite similar to each other. Only difference being that the gauss seidel method is two times faster than Jacobi method. The gauss seidel method is just two times faster than Jacobi method. All the conditions and all the conditions and the rewriting of the equation is as similar as that of Jacobi method. So to summarize it, uh, to give a short preview, let me simply say what is the condition for gauss seidel method. We are simply going to be use gauss seidel method for those equations which are diagonally dominant. Diagonally dominant. Diagonally dominant. Only those equations which are uh, diagonally dominant, for those equations only we are going to solve by using gauss seidel method. So what is diagonally dominant? So if I had to write this equation in the form of matrix, what I can do is, I can simply do uh, a equals to 6, this is 6, here comes 1, here comes 1, and this is 1, this is 4, this is minus 1, this is 1, minus 1, 5. So as you can see here, this is our main diagonal. This is our main diagonal, and in order to be and in order to be diagonally dominant, our main diagonal must be greater than the sum of remaining two elements of the same row. So what does this mean? Is six the modulus of six must be greater than the sum of one plus one, which is true. Similarly, the modulus of four, the second uh, the second our second diagonal element is four. It must be greater than the sum of one plus minus one, and our final five must be greater than the sum of one plus minus one. So as you can see here, all these three conditions are satisfied. So then only we can say that our matrix is diagonally dominant. So for such equation only, we are going to be using gauss seidel and Jacobi, uh, Jacobi method. Now, to summarize this, our uh, this is such a condition is called as convergent criteria. If our uh, equation is not diagonally dominant, our roots is going to be uh, are not going to be convergent they are just going to be divergent and we are not going to end up in any particular answer so we must have conversion criteria and our conversion criteria can be simply written as e j equals to 1 and comma j does not belongs to i e i j divided by e i i less than or equal to 1 where i runs from 1 to l till n where n represents our number of equation here we have three number of equations 1 2 3 where so our n is 3 j represents our column and i represents our i represents our row now uh, so let me simply take i as take i equals to uh, 1 then our j will be 2 comma 3 since our uh, j runs from 1 to n and j and i are not equal to each other so if i is 1 then j needs to run from 2 to 3 then what we get is a i j so that is a 1 2 plus a I remain same but j value changes to 3 divided by a11 this needs to be less than or equal to 1 so as you can see here this is our first condition our a12 is 1 our a13 is 1 divided by a11 is 6 which is less than or equal to 1 as you can see here this is simply this equation uh, let me write it down over here if I if I took 6 in the denominator what I simply get is 1 plus 1 divided by 6 is less than 1 less than or equal to 1 less than or equal to 1 so this is our conversion criteria so we need to check this condition before applying gauss seidel and Jacobi method now as in Jacobi method what we are going to do is after knowing that our equation is diagonally dominant we need to write our equation rewrite our equation in terms of x y and j so in our first uh, so as you can see here in our first equation x is the x is the variable containing the di containing the diagonal element so we need to rewrite this equation in terms of x so x equals to 20 minus y minus j divided by 6 similarly in our second equation y uh, y variable is the one containing the diagonal element so we need to write the equation second equation in terms of y so simply y will be equal to 6 minus x plus j divided by 4 and for our final equation we write in terms of j j will be equal to 7 uh, j will be uh, equal to 
j minus x plus y divided by 5 as you can see here we have simply written re written this three equation uh three equations in terms of x y and z so as you can see here uh, now we need to find for this equation we need to find the uh, roots of our equation correct to four decimal places correct to four decimal places and uh, where we haven't been given any initial approximation so we are going to consider any initial approximation so you can uh, you can uh, if there are no any initial approximation given in the question we are going to consider 0 comma 0 comma 0 as our initial approximation so let me consider that so let us consider initial approximation initial approximation 0 comma 0 comma 0 so we are going to consider x y z value as 0 comma 0 comma 0 now what we are going to do next is we are going to create a create a table so as you can see here we are going to write n over here x over here y over here and j over here we will write next one n x y j now for our first first number one what we are simply going to do is we are going to put the value zero over here and we are going to find the value of x so as you so as i already talked in a previous video of of um, jacobi method what we used to do in our uh, jacobi method is we used to place uh, zero over here zero over here, and we get certain value of x so let me uh, so let me explain it in the procedure so firstly as we need to find the root coil to four decimal places i need to set my calculator to four so click on shift and click on mode go to number six click on six and uh, put four since we need to find the root coil to four decimal places we shift our calculator to four decimal places and now let me do my first calculation now in place of y I, so in place of y i'll be placing zero and in place of j i'll be placing zero so i get this as 20 divided by six ultimately so 20 divided by so 20 divided by six will be equal to 3.333 3 so in a uh, jacobi method what we used to do is now to calculate the value of y we used to put the value of x as a 0 y value as 0 and calculate 6 by 4 and place it over here but in cost model method we do not do that we put the latest or the updated value of x so for y what we'll be doing is well for y we'll be placing we need to place the value of x so in jacobi method what we used to do was we used to place zero over here because that was our previous value of x but our latest value of x has already changed to 3.3 .3. so we in gossidal method we place the value of x as 3.3 .3 and j as 0 divided by 4 so as you can clearly see the difference in the gossidal method every process everything the condition the process everything is going to be same the only difference is we are going to place the previous values we do not put the latest value of x y j in jacobi method but in gauss riddle method we are going to be placing the latest latest method so this is our gauss riddle let me rewrite it as gauss riddle g s so for our jacobi method what we will be doing is we will be doing 6 minus 0 plus 0 by 4 since our previous value of uh, x was 0 uh, our x naught value was 0 so our let me write it over here x naught y naught j naught equals to 0 comma 0 comma 0 so we'll be placing this value to calculate y for in the jacobi method jacobi method but in gauss riddle method we will be placing the latest value which is our x1 which is 3.33 so hope you have understood the difference of gauss riddle and Jaguar method we'll, we'll be simply putting the latest value in gauss riddle method so our and hence our gauss riddle method is therefore two times faster than Jacobi method it converges to uh, it converges to the answer two times faster than Jacobi method now we'll get our value uh, value of y as uh, 0.6667 so let me place that over here, 0 0.6667 now to calculate value of the j so in order to calculate value of j what we'll be doing is j equals to 7 minus x as you can see here our latest value of x is 3.33 we place that plus our latest value of y is 0 0.6667 so divided by 5 so on solving this we are going to get the value of z as 0 0.8667 now we go into number 2 so so this is our gauss riddle method but if we were in our jacobi method what we will be doing is we will be simply doing 7 minus 0 plus 0 divided by 5 
and we get a certain value which we will be placing over here so as you can see here that's the difference between our gospel and jacobi method and we need to run this our iterations until and unless we get our x2 and x3 completely same since we need to find our root quadrant four decimal places our x1 and x2 must be same or what we can also do is we can call it the error which is e equals to 1 by 2 into the power minus 4 and this will be equal to so this will be so this will be equal to 0 0.0005 so what do you need to do over uh, what do you need to do over here is we need to find your x n minus x n plus 1 less than 0 0.005 so you need to calculate your x6 minus x5, uh, x2 minus x1 less than or equal to 0 0.005 or just to uh, simplify your process what you can do is you need to find x1 and x2 same. So if you get your x1 and x2 same you can end your iteration right over there. So you need to continue this iteration. So now to calculate the value of x2 what I will be doing is so x2 will be equal to 20 minus y minus j by 6 20 minus y. My latest value of y is 0 0.667 0 0.6667 minus my latest value of j is 0 0.8667 divided by 6 so i get this as uh, 3.0778 now for my y2 what i'll be doing is 6 minus x my latest value of x is 3.0078 so i will be placing that but in a jacobi method i will be placing my x value as 3.333 only i'll not be placing my latest value x2 but i'll be placing my previous value x1 only so that difference is the only difference between gospel and jacobi method other all remaining things are same so now uh, let me calculate my j which is 0 0.8667 divided by 4 in this way i'll be getting my y2 as 0 0.9472 Similarly for j, uh, my latest value of x is 3.0078 and my latest value of y is 0 0.94, 0 0.9472 divided by 5 placing that I will be getting as 0 0.9739. So we need to, so we need to follow this uh, same, step, uh, same step for quite a while. So just to, st st so, so just to speed up the process, uh, let me simply write down my value uh, of x5. For my, if I run this iteration till x5, I'm going to get my x5 value as 3.004, and it's going to be 0 0.9997. It's going to be uh, 0 0.9999, and my sixth iteration value is 3.00001 and 1.0000, and it's going to be 1.000. So as you can uh, clearly see over here, our difference, my x6 minus x5. So if I do x6 minus f5, I'm going to get 0.0003 which is clearly less than 0.005 I can stop my iteration right over here but if I calculate my iteration one more time I'm going to get my x value as 3.000 1.000 and 1.000 so running up to 7th iteration I'm going to get my required root therefore therefore required roots x y j equals to 3 comma 1 comma 1 so in this way by using cost total method you can solve your any equation hope you like the video and if you have any queries you can comment down below uh, thank you